Thanks for joining me today at InvestorIdeas.com Clean Tech and Climate Change Podcast, looking at today's problems and solutions for the future. I'm your host, Don Van Zandt, founder of InvestorIdeas.com, and hoping to share our way of making a difference in climate change. Good morning. Today I'm talking to the Mayor of Woodstock, Ontario, Trevor Birch, and Jean-Pierre Collin, Executive Vice President and Director of Dynasert Inc., trading on the TSX DYA and on the OTCQX DYFSF. This interview follows recent news that Dynasert has agreed to equip diesel-powered vehicles to the city of Woodstock, Ontario, with the company's hydrogen technology to reduce carbon emissions and reduce fuel costs. Woodstock is the first city in Canada to take the initiative to outfit its vehicles with Dynasert's proprietary technology. Trevor, thank you for joining us today and bringing your city to everyone's attention as one of Canada's clean initiative cities. I actually had never visited there, so I did do some research myself, and it's it's a beautiful city. I love all the heritage buildings. Can you give us a brief background on you becoming mayor and some of the platforms you ran on and that you're now implementing in the city? That's right. Uh, One of the reasons why I became interested in this role within our municipality, my prior background was working as a bureaucrat. I uh, crunched the numbers uh, for both our provincial and federal governments, as well as for the mayors in our community to make decisions. As my family began to grow, and I have three young children, I looked at some of the patterns that had developed in our community over the years, and I wanted to make sure that I revitalized our brand and uh, brought more attention to our community so that uh, some of the uh, great opportunities that had been passing us by would uh, be present in our community. I'm, I'm a little bit selfish. I, uh, when my children go off to university and college, I want to make sure that they come back to Woodstock and uh, start a family there as well so I can watch my own grandchildren grow up in our beautiful community. Now, of course, they have been educating me on ways to uh, be a better steward to the environment. Uh, Of course, our background uh, is largely in agriculture and today automotive as well. And uh, so looking at ways where we could champion uh, a cleaner environment for the future while also uh, having very highly skilled, high-end jobs in the community. I I think it's a a long-term play that uh, is definitely something that all of us need to be working towards. And can you talk about your decision to to use and implement Dynasert uh, hydrogen technology to reduce carbon emissions and reduce fuel costs and how that really fits into your bigger agenda for Woodstock? Well, when we set a a goal at uh, our county level, it was actually myself that brought this goal forward, a 100% renewable energy goal of the year 2050. It was shortly after Toyota had made the same commitment and we have a Toyota factory in our community as well as other uh, manufacturing investments that support the auto sector all across North America. So quickly we adopted the same goal that they have and we started to work on a plan right away that had academics, it had farmers, it had former government officials, it had representatives from Toyota and General Motors and other companies utility industries and natural gas and the plan that we came up with is very similar to Toyota's plan and I look at uh, all of the innovative people in our community when uh, they assemble those Hino trucks that are now barreling down the roads in the mid-sized transport truck market for diesels all over North America I know that a step in the right direction would be a technology like this from hydrogen so the relationship that we've developed with Dynasert. Our mechanic has looked at all of the different trials that have taken place and is confident that this is not only going to help us with our environmental goals of reducing some of those noxious emissions, but also it's going to have maintenance cost savings, downtime savings, as well as fuel savings. And uh, because of the attention that we receive with that goal that we have. We were the the first municipality on the eastern seaboard of North America to set up this renewable energy goal. Uh, 
I become a natural flag bearer and I, I'm able to have discussions with other levels of government and uh, I travel to Taiwan, Japan, across the USA and Canada and waving that flag of there's better ways to do things and it can help your pocketbook and it'll also help make sure that your grandchildren will have a safe environment that has clean water and clean air. That's great to hear. One of the comments from the news release that, that stood out to me was that you said in addition to the fuel efficiency and the cost advantages, it was important for you to buy Canadian, which was really great to hear. Can you talk about that and, and how, again, that fits into your overall agenda? Oh, definitely. Uh, we like to support all of our neighbors, and we, we look at some of the imbalances, especially lately in the world that we've noticed especially through Asian markets, etc., with the COVID pandemic, we now know more than ever how important it is to support our friends and neighbors right here back home. I had a discussion already with the mayor of Windsor right across from, of course, Detroit. So while we were looking out his window, looking at General Motors headquarters, we talked about taking these steps in the right direction and buying Canadian outfitting our diesel with these units. And I know that there's going to be a lot more individuals here in Ontario and, uh, of course, all across North America that are going to be looking for something that is produced right here in their own backyard. And and one of the things when I, again, read your press release and, and some of your comments, it reminded me of a previous interview that I had done with former governor, a governor of Maryland, uh, Martin O'Malley, and he had a book out called Smarter Government. And he really talked about the things you're talking about, how, uh, you know, and you're obviously at the forefront of this, how mayors are going to drive and change the whole climate change solution because you know your city's best, obviously. You know your community's best. So can you talk about that from, from your personal perspective and experience, and do you think that is going to be the force of change moving forward? Oh, definitely. The uh, testimonies at a personal level that uh, one leader can give another is of such importance. I myself, the first foray into this, I went to what was called Renewable Cities in Vancouver, and the mayor at the time, Gregor Robertson, I was able to have a private discussion with him, and he helped inspire me to come back to my own community to look at things from a new perspective. And since that point in time, and when the goal was established and the plan was released, my schedule hasn't slowed down at all, going all across, sharing those same stories to others. Uh, it was just last year that I was in Riverside uh, in California, so uh, they would refer to that as the inline, Inland Empire, just the other side of L.A., and while I was there in the mayor's office and talking about some of the steps that we've been making in the right direction, he was so impressed that I took that time while I was in his community uh, as a guest speaker for the university to take time out of my schedule to come and meet with him personally and help give him new information to take back to his council and his committees. That's what I plan to do, of course, with Dinosaur as well. Well, thank thank you for joining us today because it's really uh, great to hear that you're not only taking your own initiative, but you're going to you know go on the road and inspire other mayors to do the same. And we definitely need the change. And and I thank you personally for your contribution to that. Well, thank you. And I like to think we are all standing on the shoulders of giants. And the individuals that took a few moments to help inspire me to look at some of these problems from a different perspective. I want to return the same favor to others. Great. Thank you very much. Jean-Pierre, thank you for joining us as well today, and congratulations on the news uh, regarding Woodstock. Can you go into some more specifics of the deal and the significance of what this represents as the first city in Canada to take this initiative to use your, your technology? Well, thank you, Don. And Absolutely. This is a turning point for in the history of Dinosaur in a very big way. You know, every municipality in the world has pollution problems and is looking for solutions. And it takes the leadership, the trailblazing attitude, the, the strength of a mayor like Trevor Birch of Woodstock to be able to be the first municipality in, in the whole world to take on this innovative technology. 
So to me, this is the beginning of a whole new era for Dynacert, and that should be very positive for us. I was delighted to hear, as soon as we put out the press release and this became public news, that Woodstock had adopted our technology. And by the way, it's more than the mayor. It was, it was great to work with all the different levels at the city government and with the city of Woodstock at many levels. And this is obviously a team effort on the part of Dynacert as well. Um, I was delighted, however, to see the public reaction, the media coverage, the, the phones ringing off the hook from other municipalities saying, hey, what, what is this all about? We're interested. We all know how it's very difficult sometimes to work with governments. They're complicated organizations to deal with. And I, I will say the city of Woodstock made it easy for us, or as easy as possible, um, which is actually something very thankful from our part because um, it, it is a challenge dealing with any, any governments at any level. But all of a sudden, because of the notoriety of the mayor and, and the notoriety of the city of Woodstock, we have received a, um, a lot of phone calls from other municipalities, other levels of government. We are on the map, and it, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, the doors are now open for us to have dialogue with other levels of government. And in the press release, uh, you do mention that the hydrogen technology was granted the Smart Sustainable Company rating in furtherance of the United Force Smart Sustainable Cities Program um, of the United Nations. Can you talk about what that means to investors and, and what that means for the future of the company? That's a good point, Don. Um, the, the United Nations has different organizations at trying to do benevolent things around the world. And obviously, air pollution is a huge problem, and there are very few solutions. So we were approached to be, uh, become qualified, to have our products and our technology qualify under the United Nations programs, again, to get the notoriety and to get the stamp of approval that we, we seek, uh, so that when we're approaching cities or, or towns or even even national governments, the fact that there's an independent body that has rated us as a good company to work with, with a very good technology, that opens up the doors. And by the way, they did a lot of due diligence. This took months to, to happen. Our team in Europe, we have a, a, a division of our company in Germany uh, and Austria did a fantastic job at moving along this uh, certification. So now that we have that, we were actually in Canada rated as one of the top certifications of its kind, uh, and, and that opens up a, a lot of cities around the world who are looking for products to solve the problems of pollution. And one of the things that's important to understand, and we've seen this with the city of Woodstock as well, the federal governments around the world, the, the national governments, are are ready, willing, and able to fund cities to clean up and to have less pollution, to do less carbon emissions. There's a big political movement and funds available for that, but there aren't very many immediate solutions. We all talk about how you know global warming is a problem, but most of us ask ourselves, well, what can I do? And and governments are asking themselves the same question. So by having the United Nations certify and rate us and feature us, actually, as a technology that is available today, that is commercial today, that is global in nature, we can ship around the world, we, we, we are now a solution, a practical solution to all the municipalities in the world that want to copy and imitate Woodstock. In closing, what would you like to say on a very corporate, personal level to some of the mayors that might be listening to this? and some of the citizens in different cities so they can they can contact their mayors to get your technology out there and how they're going to make you're going to help make their cities greener certainly to the mayors of Ontario and Canada as was mentioned before we are a Canadian company with a global perspective but we're right here in Canada we're we're approachable and we have a solution to their problems that the, the population of Canada is asking for 
So we have an immediate solution, and the beauty of our technology is that it pays for itself. The fuel savings that our hydrogen unit technology provides on diesel engines actually pays for the product uh, almost immediately. So, and then there are a whole bunch of other benefits like saving the atmosphere. We hear so much in municipalities with school buses, children are breathing NOx from the exhaust of school buses at every street corner of every municipality. This is, NOx is a deadly gas and causes all sorts of problems, some problems we don't even know about yet. And our technology addresses exactly those issues head on. So we welcome the municipal governments around Canada to to contact us. In fact, they already have started to do that. We have a team um, capable of dealing with governments at many levels of government because we understand that these are group decisions and they require consensus. And we're we're wide open to do this, and we have a, a an immediate solution for them. With respect to uh, municipalities around the world, I, I think it's just a matter of time. We're already speaking to several municipalities in Europe, where in fact some of them have already started to to use our products, and the word is starting to spread in Europe as well. Hopefully, if your podcast reaches Europe, we will get Mayor uh, Mayor Trevor to be popular in Europe as well. Well, great. Thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, I do look forward to hearing when you've landed your first 20 cities and uh, roll it out from there. We'll we'll be back. (laughs) Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's it for today. Do something great for this beautiful planet each and every day. To hear more Clean Tech podcasts, visit the Clean Tech and Climate Change page on Investor Ideas. You can find it on our top template. Also, Investor Ideas has a lineup of other podcasts and themes, including the AII, the Crypto Corner, our cannabis podcast called Cannabis News and Stocks on the Move, rated one of the top investor podcasts in the sector, Play by Play, a podcast looking at sports and esports news, and Exploring Mining. To listen to any of our podcasts, visit our podcast page on Investor Ideas at InvestorIdeas.com forward slash audio. And a reminder, you can hear our podcasts on Spotify, iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, and most audio platforms available to you. If you like any of our podcasts, we would appreciate you recommending them or reviewing them on your audio platform. And to help you follow and track clean tech and renewable energy stocks, Investor Ideas has created a directory of publicly traded stocks in the sector. You can find that by going to our homepage, looking on the sidebar and looking at renewable energy and environmental themes, and you'll find our stock directories there. Investor Ideas does remind all of investors to read our disclaimers and disclosures on our site. You can find them at InvestorIdeas.com forward slash about disclaimer dot ASP. It is important to read these. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investment involves risk and a possible loss of investment. Thank you again and have a great day. For disclosure purposes, Dynasert is a paid monthly featured clean tech stock on InvestorIdeas.com. You can learn more about that at our disclaimer disclosure pages found easily on our bottom template.